Uh, good morning. Thanks for braving the snow. Um, I'm going to provide a brief overview uh, on what this uh, summit means in historical context. I was in the NSC staff for five years in the Bush administration and, 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 and was sucked into the mechanics and politics and diplomacy of some of these visits in the past. Uh, this is the eighth visit or the eighth meeting uh, between Presidents Obama and Hu. Uh, it's only the s second um, summit, state visit. There's a big difference between whether you're meeting on the margins of a G20 or a multilateral session where you have with interpreters uh, roughly half an hour of discussion. Big difference between that and what President Hu will do, which is uh, full ruffles and flourishes and honors uh, a dinner, bilaterals, meetings with uh, CEOs, and the complete focus for um, 48, 72 hours on U.S.-China relations. And it's only the second one of those. The last one, of course, was in November 2009 when President Obama visited China. And um, my impression was that the Obama administration intended to basically continue the general trajectory of the Bush administration's China policy, strong alliance relations, and then build a cooperation uh, where you can with Beijing, um, and wanted to frame that um, during the President's visit to Beijing. Um, they did so in a joint statement, which talked about respecting each other's core interests and other things. Um, but I think most administration officials would acknowledge that the next year, 2010, was a bit of a disappointment in U.S.-China relations. Um, at the Copenhagen summit on climate change, uh, in China's uh, surprisingly assertive uh, stance on territorial disputes in the East China Sea with Japan and the South China Sea with certain ASEAN states, uh, China's um, passive, almost enabling stance towards North Korea in the wake of the North's attack on the Chonan and so forth. And so um, the second half of 2010, the administration, uh, I think, quite visibly um, reasserted and redemonstrated, if you will, to Beijing the depth of American strategic influence in Asia. Um, Secretary Clinton at the ASEAN Regional Forum in June um, said the U.S. has a national interest in freedom of navigation and inserted the U.S. in the South China Sea dispute in a way we had not done before. Uh, when Japan and China came into a controversy over the Senkaku or Diaoyutai Islands and Japan arrested a Chinese fishing captain and China embargoed Japan. Um, the administration, you know, quite um, visibly reaffirmed our defense commitment to Japan as it pertains to those islands, um, trilateral U.S.-Japan-Korea defense exercises and so forth. And um, uh, we go into this summit now, I think, with both sides uh, eager to um, add a little more stability to the relationship. Um, I think that the U.S. has made its point. I think the Chinese side recognizes that it overstepped somewhat this last year. And both want, uh, out of this, a more stable uh, relationship for 2011 and arguably 2012, because this will be President Hu's last summit before the leadership transition, presumably to Xi Jinping in China. Um, so this, I think both sides hope, will set the tone for at least two years. Um, can it? Um, I think in some ways, yes, it, it can. Um, uh, first, because um, these bilateral summits matter a lot, especially to the Chinese leadership. Bonnie is going to talk more about the, the, uh, the optics and the protocol and how important that is. But um, Hu Jintao is essentially a dungist, uh, which is to say follows Deng Xiaoping's maxim of 30-some years ago uh, to lay low, bide your time, build your strength. And the relationship with the U.S. is foundational for China. You have to get that right as a Chinese leader. So it's important to the Chinese side, and this will really focus the mind. And you can see evidence that China has at least tactically adjusted its position in a range of areas. The renminbi has appreciated 3.9% uh, since June. Uh, China's rhetoric um, and diplomatic actions on the North Korea problem are somewhat more um, helpful, uh, somewhat more helpful. Um, Secretary Gates had a reasonably positive uh, visit to Beijing um, and reopened military-to-military -military ties. Uh, Beijing has agreed to engage the ASEAN countries in the code of conduct on a multilateral diplomatic discussion on the South China Sea, has softened the tone towards Japan. So across the board, on almost all these issues, uh, China has somewhat uh, softened its, its, its stance. Um, and, and finally, summits in the U.S. are particularly uh, important because Beijing can't control, the, can't control all of you <laughs> the, the way they can script and control a summit in China. 
On the other hand, uh, I think there are some real limitations, and this will likely not be a sort of historic summit uh, uh, or a transformational summit in U.S.-China relations. First, because as the two leaders work uh, on a joint statement which is being prepared, it is very hard for me to imagine how they can come up with the verbiage to um, satisfy the multiple audiences they have to satisfy, China's domestic audience, the U.S., and then, of course, our allies. Um, very hard to do. I think the joint statement will probably be fairly workmanlike descriptions of where we cooperate. Um, secondly, I think most of these adjustments uh, in Chinese behavior on the renminbi, on the South China Sea, on mill to mill, um, we've seen before in many cases, not all. Um, the Joint Committee on Commerce and Trade, JCCT, there were some important uh, uh, incremental moves forward. But almost all of these um, uh, in one way or another, reversible, particularly the military and military dialogue that Secretary Gates has opened. It's quite clear that the PLA will cut this off in an instant if we sell arms to Taiwan, for example. And the renminbi has appreciated and then been repegged to the dollar before. So it's reversible. And ultimately, the summit is not going to be able to fix the structural problem uh, in U.S. China relations and in Chinese politics, um, and particularly the fact that Hu Jintao is essentially a lame duck. Um, and there's an quite intense competition for the leadership succession in 2012, and some real questions about whether the PLA is playing along with this script. Um, and you've all heard about the um, test of China's new stealth fighter. Um, there are questions about whether Hu Jintao knew it was coming, uh, whether it was coincidental or not. Uh, my own discussions with administration officials suggest to me uh, that indeed uh, Hu was surprised by this and there's real worry that it was a spoiler move by the PLA, although we don't know. So those structural problems are not going to get fixed by this summit, but it will put a floor under the relationship and in terms of relationship maintenance be important and, in fact, indispensable because the leaders' relationship really is at the core of U.S.-China ties.